Well, welcome to another episode of From Tailors With Love, episode 25. My name's Pete Brooker, my co-host, Matt Spacer from Suits of James Bond, bondsuits.com. How are you doing today, Matt? Hey, Pete, I'm great. Uh, how are you doing? Um, well, normally I'd say I'm top of the pops, but today I'm feeling a bit groggy, uh, half jet lag, half head cold. So I've got the lurgy. Matt, you're going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting, I think. Cause, okay, Pete. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as you can tell by the sound of my voice, no one really wants to hear this bunged up uh, dribble, dribbly voice. So, Matt, what are we going to be cracking on with this week? we got some uh, big Orbar Brown uh, news to talk about. We sure do. Well, this is why we're going to release a bonus episode this week. It's because, well, if we ran on another week, I think the Oliver Brown conversation would have moved on to the stage where perhaps people might get a bit exhausted with it. Um, well, that's the thought that I had, Matt, coming into the podcast. But I just went and had a walk and got some milk. And then I came back and I thought, do you know what? How often do we actually get to talk about this sort of stuff as a Bond fan? You know, we're not from the Marvel or the DC universe that gets a superhero movie every other month. We, you know, we're not a Star Wars franchise that gets offshoots and different characters doing different films. You know, we're Bond fans that get treated to about one film every five yeah. years. And this, I think this is, nothing like this has really been done to this magnitude before i think we should be able to verbally masturbate over this for about another four or five months what do you think yeah i think we can get a lot of uh i mean we, we can get a lot more mileage out of this i mean right now it's st just starting the season for these clothes i know yeah i mean and you went you went to uh you went to an actual launch event didn't you in new york city i did yeah yeah so um yeah so i i uh on, on Wednesday last week, when when the uh, line you know, uh, had launched, David Zaritsky had you know, of the Bond Experience brought a group of people, including me, to the Orbra Brown um, New York office to you know, just to really check out the uh, the line. You know, we we did a live stream uh, with David, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. I mean, they. They hired these two actors. Uh, the, they're, they're twins. You know, they they look just as alike as Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. I mean, you you can't tell them apart. <laughs> but no, yeah. So these these two twins, you walk in, and then they're, they're, they 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 were just so nice. They greeted us. They um they fed us. They they gave they gave us uh, champagne. It was a really wonderful event. But I mean, we got to really experience all of the clothes. Okay, so shall we? go through the clothes like blow by blow and just kind of give it a rundown uh get your thoughts get my thoughts and then we'll and then we'll pick it apart what do you think yeah let's do that okay so uh let's go with uh, i've written down a list so that i don't forget but the blue toweling polo from dr no what are your what are your initial thoughts on this one Matt? you know i i had never experienced a toweling polo before i mean they've they've been doing them for a bit a little while now but Finally got to uh, try out one of theirs. They actually sent me a few items. They were very nice. They sent me a few, uh, four different items to, to try. Wow. That was one of them. Un unfortunately, they sent me a medium instead of a small. Huh. So I'm still working on getting that sorted, and I hope that it's going to be possible to get that exchanged. Because so a lot can... of stuff is sold out now, right? Right, because they, they, they sent me four items. They sent me that. They sent me the... Uh, the, the midnight polo long sleeve Mike Marino wool polo from Thunderball. Mm -hmm. They saw and they sent me uh, the uh, Thunderball blue shorts, and this, you know, the, the, the swim shorts with the, the the button down belt loops, which are really cool. And then they sent me the uh, the that uh, that red shirt from Thunderball, the, the Cardinal Capri shirt, as they call it. That's so the one that you so happen to be wearing, right? Right. So <laughs> people can't. Uh, People just listening and don't have the video. They can't uh, see that I'm wearing this. Uh, the the women's shirt. It looks so sexy on you, mate. I want. It. I mean, Pegs. we haven't even talked about it. We've been on the phone for ten minutes, and I've just been wanting to talk about it. So anyway, if you guys want to check but, us but out yeah. on YouTube, we uh, we'll put it all up in the show notes. We are on YouTube, and you can actually see this shirt on Matt. It's delicious. Yeah. So hopefully I can get that, that Thunderball polo sort. Sorry, I mean the Doctor No polo sorted out with the right size. They also sent me a Thunderball polo in medium, but that one's sold out, and there's no chance of me getting a small in that one. Matt, did they send it to the wrong building? You no, no. Oh, they originally did. They originally sent. 
No, no, it wasn't that. No, UPS dropped it off the wrong building. Over Pound sent it to the correct sure, spot. Sure, sure. You must yeah. have just been having a, a fucking nightmare trying to get all of this stuff, though. Yeah, I, I got it back the next day, all thankfully. Right. Cool. So this is the polo that Sean wore when he met Honey Rider on the beach in Jamaica, right? Right. Yep. Underneath the mango tree. So you've you've felt it, the fabric, the quality, the feel. I guess the fit is going to be slightly off because it's bigger than you would actually go for. Um what are your what are your takeaways from this? Would you would you recommend this polo? Yeah, I would recommend it. It's uh it it just it just it feels great. It's uh it's not the softest toweling. It definitely feels a bit uh, sturdier, mm. uh, so it's can hold up to some uh, action on the beach. Ooh. <laughs> no, but it's it's a really it's it still it still feels really great. I think this polo, going by the pictures, if you're into this polo, you want to buy this polo. What it says about you is that you're into your own body hair, that you really like the hair on your forearms, you really like the hair on your legs, and this polo kind of emulates that doesn't it maybe it does that you know um it's i mean if you if you have enough hair in your forearms you can definitely show that off yeah, but yeah. if you button up the polo you can show off you're not gonna be showing off much chest hair it's not like uh this one yeah, the that's... uh the 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 uh you know that camp shirt from thunderball that that's uh has a traditional cut you can you can pretend you you have Sean Connery's chest here with this one. <laughs> okay. Well, the what about the the other polo from Fundable then? So the navy navy merino one. Yeah, that one's really nice. What what I like about that is it, it's a very you know uh, fine merino, uh -huh. very fine um, gauge knit. So it it's you know if you I mean I think it it, it feels re very soft as well. So it's something that you can wear. Um, I mean, it, it, you can wear that at night in the summertime. It might be a little hot with the sun shining on it in that dark color, yep. especially in long sleeves. But if you're in the night at night, you can definitely wear that. I think that's like that's a year-round item, hmm. which is one of the very few things you can say about this collection. There, most of them they follow Orvor Brown's you know, classic summer uh, theme. It's, it's it's all like summer resort wear. You know, it's a beach wear company. Yeah. But this is, they do have some things that can be worn year round, and that Thunderball polo is one of them. So this is the one that Bond wore to investigate Largo's Palmyra estate in the under yeah. the night in Thunderball. That's uh, right. But I mean, he also wears that the same polo in uh, earlier at Shrublands uh, when he's you know, walking around that night. Uh, awesome. So this is like your your top if you feel sexy and you're a bit. You're, you're a bit sneaky i also think that out of the whole collection what this says about you if you're shopping and you get to choose this one you're well adjusted as a human being you're okay in life because this is the one i think the women would want the men to wear as well out of all of them i think this is the one that makes there's something about the kind of the dark hair the sleek look the the simple design i think this just shows everything off and it follows the line of the body etc it's not too fashiony it's it's not too much of a statement if you will right yeah it's the most classic of yeah. all the pieces too it's the easiest one to wear it doesn't yeah it, you said it doesn't make a statement yeah. it's a it's a very elegant piece so it, it's i i think i i guess with you know amongst the whole collection most most of them are make most pieces in this this collection make a make quite a statement and that's the only one that really doesn't yeah and we don't mean that in a bad way. Or it's, no, no, no. It, it's literally just something that you put on. And I think you're, like I say, you're, you're in a good place in life if you don't really need to show anything off. So this is the piece for you. Okay, what about the, the Bond dress shirt that Lazenby wore on the beach fight in Honor Majesty's Secret Service? Yeah, you know, that's that's probably one of the most adventurous pieces of, of this collection. Because, I mean, it's, it doesn't have the freely look that Lazenby shirt has. But mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit more classic. But at the same time, it's this. This is not a dress shirt. This is meant to be a beach shirt. Because the original Lazenby shirt was, you know, was a dress shirt for. He wore that, you know, under his dinner jacket with a bow tie. Uh -huh. And uh, they've turned that into the beach shirt. Uh, you know that he's wearing. So you can wear this on the beach as Lazenby did, but you don't have to be coming from a black tie affair for that. Right. Okay. Matt, uh, forgive me. I'm a little bit 
bit f- a little bit fucked up with snot and lurgy. Does he wear the shirt at any other point in the movie, or is it just on the beach? He's got two different um, dress shirts in the in the film. I know so he's got the ruffles the... one that he has a scrap in. Yeah, no. So the one that he wears on the beach, this one has some finer ruffles in it. It's not quite as, uh, you know, as, as bold. It's not as Austin Powers, I guess <laughs> I'd say. Yeah. So it, this one is a. It's definitely an easier shirt to wear, even even if you wore the original, you know, voile dress shirt that Lazenby did. But um, it does appear later on on the beach again in those in the montage. I believe it's the same shirt. Uh-huh. You see this in that in the you know in the the love montage. Yeah. Later on. I see. Okay, so one question regarding the fit. So I've been watching David Zariski's sixty minute, uh, sixty minute, sixty second reviews on Instagram, which I think are kind of sum it up in a in a nice little nutshell. There. They're they're fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah. Everyone should check out what he's done on Instagram because that really gives you. He's done fantastic reviews of these uh, shirts. Yeah, I I think um. Basically, 60 seconds on each. <laughs> We're doing like 10 minutes on each, but 60 seconds is really what you need. Uh, he said about this shirt that it does come down a little bit long. Um, so I'm thinking of getting this shirt because there's still some sm- size smalls left. Uh, I'm not too far off David's stature, height-wise. Um, so right. you've seen this firsthand. What would you say about the length of this shirt if you're going to buy it? Well, I, I do think it. I, they may have designed it to have been tucked. Huh. Which the length helps. So if you if you want to tuck it as Lazenby did, um, I mean he was wearing a dress shirt, so you, you can tuck that. But I, I mean I guess if you're wearing it on the beach, you're not going to be tucking it into your like swim swim trunks or, or shorts. Yeah. But you if you're going to wear this say to like some uh, you know just like to like like a fancy pool party where you're not actually going to be swimming, wear this tucked into... You're just going to be knocking know, the so, shit out of someone the instead. Chinos yeah. or, 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 like, like, men in trousers, you can tuck it in. Mm-hmm. I think it, you know, because you, you can wear this shirt in many different ways. Okay. It, it, it doesn't really fit any traditional mold, so there's there's definitely no rules to how you can wear this shirt. Okay, awesome. So I think that's my, my decision made. Uh, next up, the view to a kill jacket. Yeah, I remember. You, yeah, you you were telling me uh, you 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 were a big fan of this one. I'm a fucking huge yeah. fan of this one, but they sold out in the small. Really, they sold out. Yeah, yeah. sold out in the small. Yeah, what? this is a great one. I it's because it's it's it looks very similar to the original Fila jacket. Yeah. But it it definitely it, it they you know they put their own touch on it by making it in toweling. Yeah. So it's definitely been turned into more of like a poolside jacket rather than a tracksuit jacket you know you're not going to be going running in this yeah you know you're not you're not taking your midnight uh, jog with this thing on uh-huh. leaping onto uh retracting drawbridges <laughs> you know um what was i going to say so i should oh i should say that these are sold out online but that's not to say they are not available in the stores i do believe that you'll have size ranges to choose from within the store so even some stores have sold out of some sizes and no, items I don't doubt that um, but yeah so i'm just shopping online i'm not saying that these are completely gone everywhere so head down to your nearest ob branch uh oh i had a thought about this jacket yeah. now the reason why i think this one appealed to me to start with is because it resembles a view to a kill it kind of you know it's symbolic of that film and this film gets ripped on quite a bit. I think people, oh, yeah. people just say, look, he's 58, he's too old, he's, you, know, you can see all the wrinkles and blah, blah, blah. And I think when people go and buy this sh- jacket, you know what they're saying to other people? They're saying, you know what, you can go fuck yourself. You can stop <laughs> ripping on my A View to a Kill. You can stop oh, yeah. taking Roger down. He's my Bond. This is a stand-up, decent movie. And although you might like other clothes and garments in the range, you're picking this one because you're standing up for that film. Oh yeah, no, and but yeah, no, it's not just that. I think I think there are people who really do like that just that jacket. That you know, it, it's that was a very trendy item back in the mid '80s. Mm. Yeah, I mean, when you were a kid, do you, did you wear those kind of things? <laughs> no, no it, we had what was called shell suits. Uh, yeah. In the UK, do you have? Did you have shell suits? 
we might have but we might have had a different name yeah for them. so they kind of like had this sheen quality i guess they they would be a bad viscose polyester um it would look like nylon but wouldn't have the qualities of a satin if, if that makes any kind of sense christ okay i'm so bunged up with cold but uh yeah, they were they were shell suits and they were all the rage in the eighties and they were didn't look too dissimilar to what Roger wore when he was running around. So they'd yeah, made the right decision, I think, putting this in towel. And... Yeah, because yeah, Rogers was was, was velour, uh. which I think has a similar feel to toweling. Um, definitely shinier and a bit smoother, but the the toweling I think really updates it and and the fit. Dorbor Brown. You know, fit is much uh it's a bit trimmer than the original uh, fila mm. from a view book hill because I, I and i i think when i've seen this on real people like when you see it on david zaritsky's video he looks fantastic in it and i i think that's just it's because he's wearing it in a more fitted way it's not hanging off him it's not blousing on him mm. and i think that really helps give it a more modern look um, i mean david's also you know he's into you know the working out and i think that that goes along with his look as well. Forty-one inch chest, thirty inch waist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. He's... I know Dave's measurements, and I don't even know my own. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it, that I think. I mean, for him, it looks great. You know, I'm. You know, I, I don't have quite the same image that he does. I don't know if I could pull that off. So I'm going for more of the the the, the resort look with yeah. this right now. Um. But Matt, so, you know what you have over everyone that tries on these clothes. I've said this on Instagram as well. You have that killer look in your eye. When you look in the camera, there's something that transforms. When you know, I don't know what it is. You've got like the yeah. the eye of the tiger, as Carl Weathers would say. Yeah, you put this on, it looks like you would actually, you know, you're two steps away from bringing out a gun from under your shoulder and <laughs> kneecapping somebody. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, thanks, Pete. No, no, that is the highest compliment I can pay a man. Thank Next, you. the Bond Safari jacket. So, on, at the Orbor Brown event, uh, David Zavritsky wore this. Uh -huh. You know, he, he we walked around New York City and he was wearing this, and you know, it looks fantastic in person. You know, and uh, I think that it, and a lot of people, you know, they they hate on this this uh, this kind of clothes on this kind of clothes on Roger Moore. They yeah, they think they're outdated, maybe too campy, and it's a little campy, sure. But I think it looks. I mean, I've always loved safari clothes. Yeah. I I remember you know I you know just when I from when the first time as I I I watched you know the Roger Moore Bond films and I thought his safari clothes were the coolest thing. I really wanted to wear these and and th th this was like before the internet, so I I didn't know you know how other people felt about these. And later on, I kind of learned that a lot of people did not like the safari clothes. But they have come back into fashion. Like I've seen them in, in some uh, you know, some high fashion collections over the past uh, couple of years, and I, I think that it's uh, it's a really good move that Oliver Brown did this. I mean, they've sold out. I don't know if they sold out of all sizes, but they sold out of most of them. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people really are into this. It, and, and you know when, when you know when David wore it, he wore it just over a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't. I mean, over. You don't have to wear anything underneath it. You don't, and if you wear it buttoned, you don't. You know, deep V-neck T-shirt. You're not going to see anything underneath it. I think. I think it's good to actually have another layer underneath, like like David did it. Um, but you can also. Uh, I mean, you could dress it up with a uh, with a nicer shirt underneath it and wear it open. It's just there's a lot you can do with that. It's quite a versatile number by the looks of things. Yeah, and I I just think it's it's cool. Um, I'm hoping maybe in a later collection they might do another one. Hey Matt, I've got a surprise for you. You ready? Yeah. You see this? Yeah, so that's the one that, that you got. Yeah, this is not in the Vietnam. Oliver Brown one. This is one that I had made whilst I was on holiday. I don't know. Let me get the uh, the webcam up. See if that's... I can see, I can see it. I'm, I'm yeah. seeing. Yeah. Let me just move away. So you gotta. This was, by the way, modelled on uh, the jacket that I was seeing from the press releases. So I was getting some really good images. You were sending me some great um, images yeah, it, were... of the original. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, they had those great auction pictures. So, so yeah. I... 
So anyway, I've I've got one very similar, or as similar as I could get. There is a few different details that I've tweaked, like I've given it a lining. You can see like a leopard print silk lining. Yeah, so, so with yours, if you have the lining, it, that you probably don't want to wear that without a shirt underneath it. Yeah, exactly. So so, so with, with Roger Moore's original one and the one that Olaf Brown makes, you know, there's no lining, so it's, it really operates as a, truly as a shirt and yeah. not as a jacket. I mean, you, you can wear it as a jacket as well. Yours is a bit more of, of the jacket. It's more structured. So, I mean, I, I didn't want it to be just a complete shirt because I knew I'd be getting this down the dry cleaners every other day. So it was always going to be in contact with my skin. But now that I've put the lining in, it's giving it a bit of <sighs> structure. Um, and oh, I've taken out the belt tab as well around the back. So uh. it doesn't have that kind of that detail. I say taking it out. I just didn't put it in. I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did put it in. Anyway, so that's that's that. And that's, that's another lure for people to go over to the YouTube. You can check me out in my uh, safari jacket. Anyway, moving on. Matt, three left to go. The Diamonds Are Forever white shirt. Yeah, well, the, the color, they, they call the color matchstick. It's a bit of a beige, light, you know, pale beige, that woody color. You know, it's it's a fantastic shirt, too. And that's something that people really hated. I mean, when, when I put, first posted about that on my blog, I mean, I wasn't even that crazy about it. Most, most people weren't into that shirt. But I just, it's just, it fits the Oliver Brown aesthetic. They don't have to make any changes, and that fits in with the rest of their collection. It's, it's, it was originally made of towel length. So it's, it's a really classic um, shirt for them. Mm -hmm. And it proved to be very popular for them as well. People have, have loved that one. And because I think when you see that in person, you know, it's just so easy to fall in love with it. It, really? it feels great. It, looks, it really looks good in person. Um, at the event, a lot of people were trying that shirt on, and everyone loved it. Okay. I think some people were surprised they loved it. Others thought they would love it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, okay. It sounds what, like what a... you, what, hmm? Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, what do you feel about that? Um, I... I've got to say from the collection, it's probably the one that doesn't really resonate uh, amongst the others. I still think it's a beautiful looking shirt. I still would love it wrapped around my body, but it's not something that I gravitate towards immediately. Now, I think if you saw that in person, you might change your mind. A lot of people did. Mm. You know what? It sounds like a, like a sounds like what we have over here, like a, an Ulrika Johnson weather girl, you know, doesn't really look amazing on the telly but when you meet her in person you would just drop your pants immediately you know it's kind of like they have to be seen in real life to be believed yeah anyway <laughs> um the goldfinger onesie map so a few people tried that on i didn't try it on i, I kind of wish i did but uh -huh. they didn't really have things in my size um at, at this event it was mostly mediums and larges Mm -hmm. So there were not smalls to try on. Although I'm not sure if I would wanted to put a small fat on. <laughs> I think people would want to see you in that. So it was... One for it, the patron page, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's a fantastic thing as well. It's just, it, it's what people really wanted to see. They, they, they went that extra step to do that, that, um, yeah, that, That's... that uh, piece. It, and and it sold. It sold out. I, yeah. I think because it just it made it just made that impact that people wanted. People don't don't necessarily want something they're going to be wearing every day. Some, some you know they, some people want something that just to hang up just in their closet, display. Do you know what Matt? I I think where you are in life, if you want this or if you've bought it, you want a divorce. You want. <laughs> You want to be at a pool party where you can smack a girl on the ass and go hang with the boys. You're tired of being under the thumb. You know, I showed this to the missus. And she, you know, she was indifferent about it. Let's put it that way. She says, who likes this? I think she's actually kind of got the pulse of this quite. There's no woman out there that I think wants their guy to buy this, especially with respect for the price tag that it's got on it. And I think if a guy goes out and deliberately wants this, he's saying one of two things. He's going... You know what? I'm I'm sick of your shit. And number two, I want a divorce. <laughs> you know, you know, and there's there's something that has come up. Um, you know, a few people at the uh, Oliver Brown event uh, last week had said, 
you know, their wives, their girlfriends. It told them they, they can get any piece in the collection except that one. Yeah. I, I think I think that I think Joe Darlington of uh, being James Bond. I think that's I think he, he had said that his girlfriend said yeah, that's he can get anything other than that. Yeah, right. And now when Joseph goes, you know what? This is the best time to announce this. I want a divorce. He goes and buys that. <laughs> that's what he does. <laughs> it's but symbolic. You, you know what? You know, you know, if if maybe maybe if these women saw that saw it on on their their men, uh, maybe they change their mind. Yeah, yeah, maybe they would. Matt, the um, the, lastly, the butte that you're wearing, the Thunderball Capri. I should say that we're not going to go into the shorts. Um, basically, we don't have yeah. time. But the, the the main garments, I think we've covered, and we'll get onto a bit of listener mail after this. So the Thunderball Capri shirt, Matt. So yeah, it's it's made of um, of an Italian linen. So it feels. You know, it has a. It feels very lightweight. It feels soft, um, not too soft. So it 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 does have a nice drape, which um, I mean, I, I think it's. And I I think also with this color, it's not going to uh, show the wrinkle very much. Mm. It's because I mean, right now I've been wearing it. And sometimes you put on linen and it's just wrinkled immediately. You can't put it on without wrinkling it. And this this actually doesn't have that. Mm. It just has a really nice rumpled look. I think it. It, it's going to go really nice with my Thunderball uh, shorts. It just, it, I, you know, and um, it, it does have a low cut in the front. It's definitely lower than I expected. I've never worn a shirt that shows off my chest hair like this. <laughs> I think that's why I like it the most. Oh, thanks, Pete. <laughs> Matt, so, I, I think this yeah. shirt says something about a guy as well that it looks like you own a yacht when you have this shirt on. Well, you've got some or, yelling or, or magazine like subscription. I, either that or it looks like I uh, belong to a bowling club. <laughs> yeah, a very high premium one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's... Uh, I, I, I really do like this one. It and looks great. The color looks really rich. You don't often see that color, I don't think. Yeah, the color is great. Now, from when, when I can... When I'm looking at the video, the color looks entirely different in the video than it does mm. on me in person. Are you, are, you, are you seeing it as more of an orangey yeah, color? Yeah. yeah. And what do you? Yeah. Are they like the colors on the website? Is that a closer match to the I think colors? The color is very close in the site. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they call it cardinal, which obviously is named after the bird, the red bird. Mm. But it's not a bright red, really. So I'm actually not even thinking of this as a cardinal. It's, it's, it's a bit of a, a it's a little salmon, a little, a little rosy. Um, it's hard to really describe this color. Yeah. I mean, it, it's got white woven into it, so it's not like a very bright color. It, it's bright, but it's not, um, I think I think it's more flattering than a uh, you know, straight up red. Yeah, it's not in your it, grill red. It's not, it's it not... looks close to the uh, color that Connery wore. Cool. And uh, it's just, it, it's going to be a lot of fun to wear this this summer. Looks a trip on you, mate. Shall we get into some listener mail before we sign off? Yeah, so what are the, what are the uh, people asking about this, about the, about the collection? So we've got Betamax Video Club on Twitter. And you guys out there, if you've not heard of Betamax Video Club, the podcast is great. They've been doing some, they center on 80s films and they've been doing the Bond ones recently. So check that out. Anyway, Betamax Video Club says, is the Avtac, the View to a Kill jacket, as wonderful in real life as in the photos? Now you've seen it up close, Matt, so... Us, yeah, us I put it on. I think it's. I think it. It really does feel great. Um, you know, it's. It. It. It's. It doesn't. I don't. I don't feel like I'm wearing. You know. You know. Some outdated. You know. Eighties uh, athletic wear. I. It. It definitely feels updated from that, but it still has that. that the look, if you really want that older look. Um, and I think it's just really nice and toweling. Nice. It's a great thing to have. So it does. Um, Alice Dryden, which is at Husky Tear, T E E R, says on Twitter the collection seems to focus on Connery, Lazenby, and more. What would you like to see from later Bond's wardrobes? Ooh, you know these. Uh, I mean, Dalton wore some some uh, some interesting pieces that could be updated for for this collect, you know, for, for old Bart Brown, you know, in, uh, I mean, some of the things that he wore in License to Kill took place in Key West, in, 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 uh, in Central America. I mean, that's just, oh, that's Oliver Brown's, uh, territory. That's, that's what, that's where they want people to wear their clothes. 
you know, it's, it's not it's not to, their clothes are generally not to be worn in London or no. New York City. They're, they're for that kind of place. And so I think there's um, you know like some of his jackets that he wears. There's um, there's a you know, the, the navy blue jacket that he wears when he's uh, resigning. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that, leaps that, off that, the uh, leaps off the balcony. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's one of the most memorable scenes from from the License to Kill, and I think that that jacket could be updated by Oliver Brown and in a future collection, um, mm-hmm. just you know to represent Dalton. I mean, uh, and they they could also you know have their take on some of uh, Brosnan's um, Cuba gear from. Oh, that's from a good show. Day, yeah. um, if they want to do Brosnan. I feel like Craig. I mean, they've they've made some clothes for for Craig in his films, so they they do have him covered. And I feel like to remake some of his clothes that he's that other brands have made, the brands that are still making clothes. Mm. And, a bit redundant, and isn't it? Really? I think it's a bit redundant, and uh, it's maybe not quite. It's not respectful to those brands. Mm. Where if you could still go to those brands and get those clothes, yeah. I mean, they 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 have it covered. Brazil, even going back to Brazen, things have changed a lot since Brazen was Bond. So I think you can go back to that and uh, you know update those looks. But we, what do you think? Well, I've I, I kind of feel the same. I was think I was racking my brain thinking what would we recreate from Danny Boy, and then I just thought, well, what's the point? I mean, he's he's not hanging around in one outfit where you think, ah, there you go, that's the cool a view to a kill jacket that people have got some kind of cult status vibe to it. It's I don't think Danny has that in his era quite frankly um and i i was thinking the die another day the cuban feel i, I quite like some of those those shirts you know what i'd love though if we, if we just go carte blanche what outfit would you actually have out of the entire series remade i'd have the denim suit that uh roger wore in that time <laughs> that yeah that leisure suit that he wears it's uh <laughs> you're damn right i would i know yeah. i'd buy every size and every <laughs> item matt moving on yeah. um what uh double o files the double o files will you be giving away a gold finger blue onesie i don't think so <laughs> um not on our budget uh, what else oh lastly uh we've got daniel gaster on instagram he actually yeah people should be following daniel gaster on instagram because he every day posts pictures of his suits that he wears he's got like uh, mason and son suits and tom ford shirts and Blah blah blahs. He, he's, you know, he must be like the the smartest dude in his office. Responses: Daniel Gaster. I've got the fundable pink shirt, and I think it's fantastic. I just wonder about the play suit? Question mark. I think that's probably more of a hypothetical. I'm impressed by the range, and it's what I would have thought of when they did Phase One. So yeah, he's following in your footsteps, Matt. Right? He's got the fundable cardinal shirt. All right. Good choice, boys. Well, he, he'll probably have more limited range with that shirt over here in the UK where it rarely gets above 15 fucking degrees in this country. So <laughs> he's going to need a, a few trips to Key West, I feel. Anyway, Matt, I think that's probably about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, we've got a. let me just do the uh, the household chores. I'm not sure if we did them earlier. We're on Twitter, at Taylors With Love is where we kind of tweet and re spread the rumours and keep that churning away. Matt, what's the email if people want to get hold of us? You can uh, contact me at matt at bondsuits.com. I mean, I send listener mail or any other questions you have. Cool. And we've got the YouTube as well. There's a link to that on Matt's site. Or just type in Bond Suits uh, in YouTube or your search bars. My blog is humanresearch.xyz. Matt, I'm going to be posting a, a blog about how to make a medium sweet coffee. <laughs> like okay. the, yeah i've done the video how about that keep it keep that exciting going right and that's it i suppose until next time buenos for tornos matthews goodbye countess